Hello there and welcome to another Bow Beats video here and today it's a special one. It's my event coverage from Super Booth 21. So I thought I'd just make one big video, like one mega video, showcasing the latest coolest stuff from the world of synths and music tech and uh, yeah, let's let's do it. Welcome, I'm Winfred from Wild Music and I'm really proud to introduce you on our, our new wavetable analog synthesizer called M. So it's in the big tradition of Wild of Wavetable synthesis. So we have uh, eight voices, four part multi timbre, full analog filters, analog VCAs. And what's important, so we have no effect section inside. So that means every sound you hear, it's a uh, dry, dry sound. So uh, with no reverb on, no delays. Every sound uh, modulation is set with the uh, LFOs and the envelopes. Uh, two oscillators so which can uh, deliver some wavetables so we have uh, I think 96 wavetables inside so all the wavetables from microwaves the classic wavetables are inside some wavetables from the PPG 2.3 uh, some wavetables from Wall of Q and some selection from the developer uh, some, some wavetables as well. And you have 32 uh, wavetable places for user wavetables. All the classic microwave sound cards uh, which are existing on the market since 30 years are compatible. So it was very important for us because uh, yeah, there are a lot of sounds outside so you can load them, you can make a dump if you have a microwave at home or a friend, so you can dump the sounds inside your own sounds. So I'm here with Christian from Fine Gear that made uh, or makes the dust collector, the effects unit that I reviewed on the channel. And uh, we we have a little bit of an exclusive teaser here. So you you um, you don't have something new to show us here yeah, for Superboot, but uh, well, we're working on something from the same series with, uh, as the dust collector. And what I can tell you is the name, mm -hmm. and it's going to be the dirt magnet. So now I'm taking a bit of a walk to a different part of uh, the event. The event is actually spread out, like the main area is over there. And then just across the park, there's another area with like bungalows. And over there, somebody set up a, a little Eurac library or something. Yeah. <laughs> they said that there would be scenes here. Right? It's Okay, let's do a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Only the best. <laughs> Only the best for Bo.
This is the, the Osmos polyphonic synthesizer with an inbuilt synth engine that can also act as a controller for all kinds of different plugins and hardware instruments that you might already have. So it's fully downwards compatible and when I say downwards compatible it says uh, that there has to be something more about this than being a normal keyboard or synthesizer. And there is in fact, so we've invented this augmented keyboard action where you could do more than just like um, triggering a sound and then letting it go, like you would do on a normal synth. In fact, here you can shape the sound continuously over time, just like a singer or a violin player, whatever would do. And let me just show it to you. There are three dimensions sure. of uh, control that are accessible with this new augmented keyboard action. There's a first pressure, initial pressure phase dimension, whatever you want to call it. And then you come to a certain pressure point and from there on you have several millimeters of aftertouch. And then you can wiggle the key sideways to play vibrato or play pitch bending. As you can hear, this is something that works polyphonically on every note. Simple expression. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was walking through the forest and I found these guys here. <laughs> it's, it's actually very difficult to find this place, to be fair. You guys are probably familiar, your readers. I guess we call them readers, Bo. Uh, your readers are probably familiar with the Super 6. This is the, uh, the Super 6 desktop. So basically, we've taken everything that uh, makes the Super 6 what it is which is kind of a really lovely sound engine, 12 voice polyphonic analog hybrid synthesizer. And we've really done a no compromise take. We've made a solid 
all metal construction. We've got nice feet, quality feet to angle the display. It can be rack mounted, it can be visa mounted. We've added a few nice features to it, like it's got an analog high pass filter that's continuously variable as well. Um, we've got super resolution now on all the controls. Um, big, big update to the inside of it. So when this comes out, a big update to the Super 6 keyboards coming as well. We'll be um, making a later update to make this an expander for the Super 6 as well, to expand your Super 6 to 24 voices, really for the, for the man or woman who has everything. But yeah, it's really lovely. I've been having lots of fun here, connecting the two up together and, uh, you know, sort of jamming with the keyboard controlling this. Obviously all controls now send uh, and receive MIDI CC and NRPN, so it's completely MIDI controllable. You can use it as a surface to MIDI control things. All and, the that mobs, will, uh, and that will work for uh, the keyboard version as well? That work for the keyboard version yeah. as well. In fact, we're running a new version of our firmware here, which is exactly the same firmware that's on this. So hold tight everyone for an update to the keyboard coming at the same time as this comes out. Next up, we're gonna take a little stroll down that way and check out the new Dreadbox 6 voice analog polysynth. So I think that the absolute coolest thing that I tried today was that new drum machine from Erica Synth. It's like a digital analog hybrid and it's only for voices but you can actually do parameter locks and you can record automations which is like it really does something you know it opens it up a lot for for both sound design but also like just making interesting beats so
So next up we're gonna go and check out a synth that I'm actually quite curious about. It's from Fred's Lab and it's a six voice digital synth with analog filters and I think it's four part multi-timbral. <laughs> And Fred just told me he has an even newer synthesizer than the Ture. Is Absolutely. that how you say it? Ture? Ture. Ture. And, and it's DIY. It's partly DIY, yes. So if you order it as a kit, then you get a little platine, yeah. which has all the true, uh, SMD components uh, soldered. And then your job is to solder the other components to make a complete paraphonic synthesizer with analog filter and VCA. Hmm. So even somebody like myself, who is super untechnical... I'm sure you can do it, no yeah. problem. Yeah. I, made a, I made a Korg NTS-1. Oh, it's already good enough to do it. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the machine. So the machine has a built-in sequencer. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, purely digital? Is there any analog components? So this is a hybrid design, which yeah. means that the oscillators are digital, but the rest of the chain, which means filter, VCA, and the envelopes are purely analog. Mm, they are awesome. controlled by the, the processor, but they are analog, yes. Really good, like has a nice beefy sound. So, so he just asked me what I would pay for for the kit, and I said, I, I generously, I said two hundred, but it's actually well, it's actually one hundred twenty nine for the kit and one hundred seventy nine for the assembled version. Yeah, which I think for a nice little bass synth with parts that are analog is is pretty fair, to be honest. I guess you you get a lot for your money. Yeah. <laughs> now let's do some more acid. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Befaco and their new module Plethora. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's the noise Plethora. Yeah. Plethora. Yeah. yeah awesome. I think so, I think it's like that. Uh, well, none of us are Greek, but so the noise Plethora is a three three channel noise uh, generator. Um, the, we have these two channels that has uh, different algorithms, noise algorithms, that are, so we have a few banks, different thematic bands, banks, and then, then in each bank we have different sounds. Then the, the, the nice thing of, of this module is that the, while the noises are, alg are digitally, algorithmically generated, then we have uh, analog filters, multi-mode multi analog filters will give you the, the, the final touch and the, 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 the feeling of, of noises. So with this, with the, with the noises bundled and the, and the three positions uh, filter, you can have from hats to glitches to, to textures. So it's, it's a very complete uh, one. Then here we have a white, a white noise and a gritty generator, also with a, with a multi-mode filter. This filter is two filters on a row. So the cue is super steep. So it will allow to, to, to shape more aggressively your, your, your noises. So 
So yeah, noise is fine, noise is nice, but I find that it, the best way to do it is to shape your noise into some percussive sounds. Something I also really want to get across in this video is that this is not just an event about like new things, new products. It's a lot about the people, uh, the people, the, the, the community of users, the community of creators that makes the products. It's just a yeah, really nice and special vibe to the place. <laughs> Guys, we are here from in Superboot Berlin 21 uh, to um, introduce our new product. It's a Godfather. Uh, basically, it's a creative multi-channel audio processor and effect units, multi-effect units, and uh, we have on board all main features, all mixing main features like pan, compressor, limiter, uh, gain staging, and uh, and the other mixing with a double soul. And the second soul is a creative multi-effect machine, so you can basically have on each channel, each four uh, input channels, saturators, independent delays, independent double pulse delays with uh, uh, double repetition of the main delay, reverb engine, you, uh, you can customize your, uh, your reverb and you can save and preset, uh, uh, preset and recall it and uh, independent uh, filters for each channel. Two, LF two built-in LFOs, multi-assignable, and uh, a lot of connection uh, for CV output, uh, two CV input, four input channels and four output channels, MIDI in, gate in, and so a lot of things. And a beautiful design, uh, all made in Italy. <laughs> and when, um, when do you expect it to be available? Yes, we we think in a couple of months because the the product the, the product engineering is uh, almost ready. We are working on software, but uh, we we hope uh, we hope very soon uh, to see our good father on your desk. Right. So this is uh, one of. Add the, one sec. Yeah? Do you want the umbrella sticking out your head? <laughs> so this is one of the, the the many small areas of Superboot Twenty One, and as you can see here. Uh, a lot of bungalows um, and in each bungalow there there is synthesizers and uh, certainly the quietest super booth it's uh, especially at this time in the morning yeah it's, it's, exactly uh, yeah relaxed it's relaxed yeah which yeah. is nice which is nice i actually think they should should keep uh, parts of this like with the with the bungalows and stuff because it's kind of nice that it's a little spread out and it's not so inten intense yeah, in every corner yeah yeah it's not it's not all banging techno it's kind of like <laughs> I was you can hear the birds you can <laughs> yeah you can like so hello here at the super booth um, this year we show the latest incarnation of the drm1 it's the drm1 mk4 it looks very much like the mk3 version but there are some improvements inside the machine some instrument channels are still identical to the old one or with just a, a few improvements like the uh, multi-channel is uh, more or less the same snare channel is the same but we improved the hi-hat channel um, and we also improved the drum channels which are now uh, which have different um, frequency ranges drum one goes deeper and drum two goes a little bit more higher uh, we completely um, um, made a redesign of the kick channel which is, is completely new now um, it's the same principle like on the MK3 we have eight instrument channels each instrument channel has uh, one two three four five six seven parameters for uh, tweaking the sound uh, plus a panorama and a volume knob and that's it it can be sequenced by uh, MIDI and we still have the trigger inputs but on the MK4 the trigger inputs uh, 
can be triggered dynamically, which is absolutely new. The MK3 version only could be triggered with a fixed level. Now we can trigger it with dynamic. And there's uh, there's two versions of it, right? Yes, you can you can get it without the uh, gate channels or the gate inputs. The machine is completely the same. And the other option is with the um, optional gate inputs. Hmm. Cool. So I just got to test a pretty wild Eurac module. It's like a one voice percussive synthesizer, but you can also save sounds and have them played back and, and sequenced to create some really like wild rhythms and really wild sounds. So here's the demo and remember it, it, it's a one voice synth, but everything you're hearing is basically coming from that. I also found this little synthesizer here. Now, I didn't really get a good chance to try it. There was so much noise going on, so I couldn't really tell what it sounded like. But I think it's cool. It's analog. Yeah, maybe worth checking out. So I'm here with Retro Kids, who has something really exciting to show us. Can you tell us a little yep. bit about uh, what it is? Yeah, sure. We, uh, we actually we made a real-time MIDI recorder which is uh, maybe some people know the MMT-8 from the early days uh, and it's still very well known because it's so easy to use. So we made a smaller uh, version of it and uh, we added some more stuff for uh, real-time uh, quantizing or swings and transposing uh, so it would be a handy thing to have on, on portable rigs. So it has two MIDI inputs and two MIDI outputs and a sync output and a USB connection where you can also connect our RK006 which can expand the whole uh, MIDI thing with another extra port. Then uh, here you have a layout for the eight tracks. Um, one track can contain 16 MIDI channels with all the automation or program changes, whatever you want. And then, well, yeah, recording is just a matter of selecting the track you want to record to and uh, press record and then it will do something. Could you show us how just how, how you record yeah. and just do a little thing? Yeah, sure. Um, so, well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I have a little metronome. I can hear it here uh, as opposed to inside. So I'm glad we're outside mm -hmm. now. <laughs> and uh, I've uh, preset the length to, uh, let's see, two bars. So, yeah, when I'm ready, I just press the record and then I'll start playing. And, uh, well, if it's okay, I press record once again and I can uh, select another track if I want because, yeah, now I'm going to add some drum parts and uh, maybe it's nice to keep them separate first. So I'll record a hi-hat, let's see. Yeah. So you hear I play, the, play this very crappy. I can throw it away by pressing the stop. But I can also accept it and just add some quantizing to it. So now I have cleaned up this kind of thing. I can also add a swing to it. Or not, this swing is all uh, on, on each track, it's separate, so you can choose whatever thing you want on whatever track. Um, well, this is okay, sounds a lot better now, so time to add some extras. Well, now it's time to uh, play some, yeah, something on the Uno. You know. ah, well, I'm not a very good player, but uh, let's try something. And I'll just to show you, you can record also pitch band, for example. So, I saw that there was a little button called loop, so yeah. I got curious. 
and you explain that it's not really just a, a recorder for doing unquantized, unquantized recordings. You can actually do sort of patterns, and you call them parts, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I think this thing is uh, these parts. They were also in the MMT8, and uh, although it was recorded mm. like real time, like this, people love to use it to loop parts as well. So it's basically the uh, beginnings of programs like Ableton as well, where you can just select a, a, a part or a clip and queue them up. So here you can loop one part and you can select another part to queue up after the one mm. you're just playing. And there's also a, uh, a, song, a song mode here, where you can chain up these parts in a, uh, in a, in a certain order, so you mm. can construct a song mm. if you want, and you can save mute states and transpose states in this chain so you can use the same part for mm. 10 times and the more we explore this little uh, recorder it also has a it also has a step sequencer it does have a yeah, little step yeah. sequencer okay. i mean that's not that's not a bad thing like <laughs> no, um, I, i'm getting more and more excited about it it's it's <laughs> No, it really does have a, a pretty clever little step sequencer and you can also record automations yeah. for uh, CC um, values, yeah, yeah. for example, with the MIDI, with the MIDI keyboard yeah, and record you need an input, yeah. Yeah, so record it into the per step. Yeah. So it's kind yeah, of clever. It's, yeah, we, well, some, when you want to make a beat, for example, it's, it is handy to have a, a thing like, uh, like a 16th note division, so we made sort of a system where you can move that play hat on a fixed uh, fixed step so um, uh, entering uh, hi hats or kicks is an easy process yeah and uh, if you have a pattern in your mind like uh, uh, you want to play something hard soft hard soft and you have the rhythm and you just play this on forehand yeah. and it will record it so it's, a, it's like a play. pretty pretty high resolution step recorder in that sense because you can record yeah. all of these like yeah. uh, different changes uh, with yeah. velocity and the CC yeah. and you can record the mod wheel and pitch wheel yeah. movements and stuff like that yeah 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 it uh, well for for musicians who have everything in their head and know how to play perfectly they can just press record and and, and play and then it's in there but if you uh, are more uh, yeah you are more happy with working on a grid it's also possible or, or you just can't play like me then it's then it's perfect <laughs> I, we can shake hands on that <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the step uh, part was something I wanted to have inside the RK8 also mm -hmm. because I'm not not that good at playing <laughs> piano but awesome. I understand that you have an idea in your mind and you want to have it without quantizing then you yeah. want it yeah awesome <laughs> Hey, hello, this is Luis from Pachin Panda, and we are excited to be here in Superboot. We have two modules to show. Uh, we have this kick drum module. We have a Trucero modulation input, so you can have a wide range of not only kick drums, but many other percussive stuff. And then we have this other uh, VCO to show, which is a complex uh, VCO in a small uh, size. Right, so I'm here with uh, Robert from uh, Tangible Waves that makes AE modular. have a big uh, like a, a new system that you're also uh, selling for educational purposes could you talk a little bit about that yeah we started the project uh, synth explorer some months ago 
because we have seen that modular synths are great also for educational purposes. This field uh, which is called STEM education, science, technology, uh, math and yeah. engineering. And we found the modular synth contains a lot of these aspects. You can learn about electronics, for example, with uh, our breadboard module. SA modular is very DIY friendly at all. And you can learn about physics, about waveforms, about spectrum, all these physical aspects. I think it's much more interesting for a student to see and listen to a waveform and to a spectrum uh, instead of only see it on the on the chalkboard and, and the teacher showing it theoretically. And, and so we decided to make a system, a pre-configured system, especially for this purpose, with all necessary modules to that are focused on, on all these educational aspects. Yeah. For example, it contains the meter module, which is an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer and also a voltmeter so you can get more in depth of all this what you hear and also the knobs are color coded so important functions uh, have a red knob and uh, not so important stuff has a, has a blue knob and additional stuff has a green knob so you you get a better overview Another potentially interesting module to check out is this polyphonic envelope generator. Um, I don't know all that much about it, but yeah, I'm just leaving it here, so go and check it out if you want to. Uh, hi, it's Arthur for Atov Project, and uh, we make a uh, CV, MIDI, and I2C controller with 16 custom made faders by Alps. And it's a unit that is compatible both with your rack and as a standalone unit, so you can take the unit out of the rack and put it in your system. And everything has been done so the signal is as smooth and as nice and as clean as possible. So, yeah, here it is. Yeah, we have uh, five new, uh, one new modules. Um, Starting with Croc that we introduced uh, last year at Superbooth. Uh, it's now done, uh, we're waiting for it at the moment. It's got white noise, pink noise, and two extra inputs that we have added. Uh, high pass uh, white noise and low pass pink noise, great for modulation. We have the final version of Repression, uh, our uh, quite feature-packed uh, comparator with uh, a both below, equal and a bipolar output, uh, great for audio stuff. CV controllable, of course, and then we have a clock divider, uh, one output per division, from divided by two to divided by 64, and it has some uh, pretty neat um, uh, tricks in the reset inputs. It has a gate to trigger input, not to stop your clock divider if you're using longer gates to, uh, to reset it, and also it resets on high level to have the first beat of your bar when you reset it. Then we have a big, big um, 20 HP one new module, which is an eight-stage uh, shift register that can work as a linear feedback shift register in the spirit of uh, the Benjolin core to get like chaotic patching, or um, the um, the uh, Turing machine is based on, on the same kind of stuff. It will have an expander to uh, an expander port to work with the uh, Turing machine expander. One last one new module, which is a passive bidirectional module that can work as. Uh, one in, four out, and then you get four attenuated version, different attenuation uh, of your input, or it can go uh, four in, one out, and you've got a mixer in only like 14 HP. So, pretty flexible module. Yeah. Also, thankfully, the weather got a lot better. Uh, it didn't rain the entire event, so yeah. At Superboot, Techno Bear. <laughs> and hey, camera inception. Bobeats, doing Bobeats with Bobeats. Bobeats type stuff. <laughs>